Alright guys, so welcome to this transit update. So first today, I will be mentioning two topics that are going on right now within the MTA. The first one is the reopening of public bathrooms at specific subway stations here at the NYCT subway. Once again, it's at selected subway stations. It is not going to be all of them, but of course, your selected stations here in the boroughs. Now the second portion of this video will be a dedicated portion to what will be uh, a semi shutdown of the seven line that will be occurring for the next six weekends beginning in early February and so because of that and it is also due to ADA accessibility upgrades and so with that I'm going to make sure that I cover that in the second part because I do understand that the seven line is very important and that from my understanding there are definitely a lot of viewers out there that go on the seven line and that particularly live in Queens or live within that specific portion of the seven. So I make sure that I will cover that uh, for tonight's transit update. As you guys know, it is Monday, January the 9th. And the good news is to start off practically your first, well, your second week of the year. You do have uh, certain bathrooms within uh, your NYC subway station that will be opened up at last. So there you see male and female bathrooms at nine stations will reopen. So it looks like I did make a mistake. And actually, in fact, AM New York was right after all. So it did meant nine stations, but it was supposed to be 18 bathrooms. So let me correct myself there. So there it says uh, male and female bathrooms at nine stations will reopen at 7 a.m. on Monday. Uh, the MTA today announced that 18 bathrooms at nine subway stations will reopen the public on monday january the 9th bathrooms one male and one female at nine stations will be open daily from 7 a.m to 7 p.m uh, with a one hour closure for cleaning from 12 p.m to 1 p.m practically lunch time uh, for those out there especially if you're working uh, bathrooms in the transit system had been previously closed due to the pandemic the pandemic created many challenges to providing faster cleaner safer service in the system said Transit President Richard Davey, but as ridership continues to rebound, we are pleased to provide relief to customers by reopening some bathrooms across the transit system. When customers have got to go on the go, we've now got them covered at select stations. Uh, the MTA took advantage of the closures of bathrooms to perform needed maintenance to these facilities, including new motion-activated faucets, new fixtures such as hot hand dryers and dispensers, new slash painted privacy panels, new lighting, tile grouting, new door signs reflecting hours of operation, ceiling painting, and deep cleaning. So here are, or here is the list of subway stations that will have bathrooms reopen by practically today, one day. And as we zoom in, here are your selected stations. So the first one is 161st Street, Yankee Stadium, BND, of course. Union Square on the 4, 5, and 6. In the Bronx, East, well, the first one was the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. So the third one is another Bronx station, East 180th, 2 and 5th. 42nd Street, Bryant Park, that definitely is a good idea. BD, F and M. J Street, Metro Tech, A, C, and F, that's really good given uh, that it's practically the hub here in Brooklyn. So that I definitely do agree. And a surprising one to me it has to be King's Highway, B and Q. I wasn't expecting that. If anything, I were to expect there to have Barclay Center on this list. Because from my understanding, Barclay Center is probably way much more important than King's Highway. But I don't know what King's Highway has that it makes it to this list. Again, I just find it surprising. You see all the stations that are listed here. And you and you look at King's Highway, you're like, wow, that's interesting. Probably the only reason why they mentioned King's Highway is due to the fact that there is lots of connections that is within that station. You have the BA to two, the select, 
uh, the B100, and you have all sorts of bus lines that do roam around there at King's Highway. So who knows? There might be some reasonings with the fact that this is on the list. I do find that quite surprising. Station after that is Jackson Heights, Roosevelt Avenue, E, F, M, and R. After that, another station in Queens, Forest Hill, 71st Avenue, E, F, M, and R. So those two make sense. I definitely agree. Those two practically are one of the most important stations in Queens. You, you ask anyone in Queens what are one of the most important hubs in Queens. I could, I could practically, you could practically almost say that Jackson Heights and Forest Hills would be one of the answers that they would give. And the last one is Fulton Street A and C. So there you have it. It's not a surprise, but I think it's a sigh of relief because if anything, there has been lots of those that not only have been complaining, but have been saying for these last couple of years that the bathroom should be open. Yes, I deeply understand that the pandemic is going on. You still have lots of people out there that are, that are really cautious on what they do. So, for example, what I mean by that is you will have your few that still have the latex gloves on. You will have the few that still have on the double mask. You will have on the few that will still practically social distance six feet. Again, you'll have those people that will do that. But, hey, if, if they want to do that just for the sake of being protected and trying to avoid getting COVID, well, I guess it's a good thing. But like I said, at this point, when you look at it, COVID is just practically another cold and flu. That's that's the way I look at it. And if you get it, then what could you do? As long as you have a good immune system, you eat healthy, you are in good shape, you're you're not overweight or anything, then I'm pretty sure you could tackle uh, COVID, if anything. But I do like what they did here. And one of the things that I do find surprising is that you would assume that when these bathrooms were closed, that they were going to be closed and that's it. That they weren't going to do anything and just leave them there. But it does seem that while they did close the bathrooms, they did make sure that they either made changes or made maintenance to those bathrooms. And that we see highlighted in this portion of the press release is exactly what they did. And that was the needed maintenance so that these bathrooms could look better but not amazing. Again. If we want these bathrooms to be open, we at least want them to look better. Because if they still look like how they looked before things got crazy in the pandemic, then we all should tell ourselves at this point, what was the point of doing that at the end? But that's what's going on there. And like I said, these are the stations in which bathrooms will reopen. Once again, Yankee Stadium, Union Square, East 180th, 42nd Street, Bryant Park, Dish Street Metro Tech. Kings Highway, Jackson Heights, Forest Hills, and Fulton Street. In my personal opinion, I could definitely tell you right now that the Kings Highway should have been replaced with Barclays Center. Again, given, given, given the importance, given the amount of lines, given the amount of people that come in and out of that train station, I could almost tell you right now that Barclays Center is a shocker for me and the fact that it is not on this list. In terms of those that live in the Bronx, Yankee Stadium, I don't know about that. Maybe there is a lot of people going there. Uh, East 180th, from what I understand, that is a pretty important station in the Bronx. I could, I could definitely tell it is. In Queens, I could definitely agree. Roosevelt and Forest Hills, those are two very big stations in the Bronx. Fulton Street and Union Square, I do agree with those. That has to be on the list, including Bryan Park and Union Square. That definitely makes any sense. But like I said, Kings Highway, who knows about that? I would actually like to know what was the reasonings of that station having its bathrooms open. Again, I can't really complain a lot because then again, I live one stop away from it, from the B. So I, I would probably say right now, I'm definitely happy about this. But again, I would love to have some explanation as to why that was the case. But that is what is going on in this press release. Once again, good news uh, to start off. Once again, this year, 2023, at least we are on a good note in the MC. And that is 18 bathrooms will reopen at nine train stations here in the MTN. Like I said, it did start today, January 9th, Monday. Quite an important 
update for those that go on the seven line. I did post this in the community section about a week ago, in my understanding. And so once again to get right back at this because I do believe this will definitely be an important update and an important change to service on the seven from what I could see right now. Then it is always important that I do provide this a segment on this transit update. So there it says MTA to begin construction on accessibility project at Queensboro Park. And so because of that, six weekends of seven line closures. So that is a picture of what would be the futuristic look of the new elevator installed at Queensboro Park. I definitely agree with this. Given the importance of a station like QB, a QBP in Queens, where you have the NNW and you have the 7 as well and the 7 Express too. Every time that I would take the train there or every time I am on the train and let's say the train gets off or arrives at Queensboro Plaza, you could always note that that, that platform will always be packed because from the amount of times that I take the 7 and when the train gets off at Queensboro Plaza, I tell you that platform is always full. A lot of people either get out of the train or get into the train. So that is my full understanding of my own experience when I've gone on the 7 and experienced how it's like at Queensboro Plaza itself. Project will add two elevators. So we're looking at two elevators. That's definitely good. We thought it was just one, but it actually is two in fact. And other accessibility enhancements. Seven line service to be suspended between Hudson Yards and Queensboro Plaza for six straight weekends this winter and spring. So that's interesting. Even spring is included here. I don't I don't recall that spring would be halfway point of March. But my understanding is spring begins toward like the end of March, but they decided to put spring here anyways. Because hey, time goes by really fast now, if you guys have noticed. So with that in mind, with this shutdown between Hudson Yards and Queensboro Plaza, there will be free shuttle buses provided. And with that, uh, the first weekend with Seven Line Service outage will be Saturday, February the 4th. So it will be the first weekend of February where this will be occurring. And this will begin in effect uh, from 12.15 in the morning uh, throughout 5 a.m. Monday, February the 6th. So if anything... You definitely will see this in your plan service change live stream from what I could almost assume right now, because if it's saying that here and I could almost assure you guys that in a future live stream, when we do the plan service changes for the first weekend of February, you are definitely going to see that this is going to be there. So there it says uh, the MTA today announced that it will begin construction to install two elevators to make the Queensboro Plaza a fully accessible station. This includes an elevator at the southern entrance of the station and an elevator between the mezzanine and the two platforms. The station is a busy transfer point in Queens that serve approximately 70,000 riders on an average weekday in November of 2022. This estimate includes both customers who swipe in at the station and those who are transferring between 7 and NNW. The work will be completed in phases and will require weekends of service changes beginning with service outages on 7 line at 12.15 a.m. Saturday, February the 4th and later in May on the end line. So I see why now they're mentioning spring because if it's saying in May, then yes, that is deep into spring at that point. Queensboro Plaza is a station with high ridership and in the center of a rapidly growing neighborhood rendering it a complex construction project involving work to be done over the busy 11-lane wide approach to the Ed Koch Queensboro Bridge, two of which are bike lanes. This project is also in coordination with the construction of a redundant accessible entrance on the north side of the station under a zoning for accessibility project. The improvements coming to Queensboro Plaza will greatly benefit tens of thousands of riders said NYCT President Richard Davey. Accessibility is such an integral part of mass transit, especially for a city like New York, where mass transit is essential for many. 
When complete, the project will provide critical accessibility upgrades, security updates, and customer experience improvements throughout the station. Building in dense urban environments with infrastructure that dates back more than 100 years is complex and challenging, said President Jamie Torres Springer of Capital Construction, I'm sorry, of Construction and Development. But making our system accessible is essential, and so we are finding creative ways to meet that challenge. Queensborough Plaza is a perfect example of taking advantage of private investment to maximize the benefit for riders while making it cost to the MTA. So I'm definitely not going to mention too much of the quote because it, it does get too redundant. But there it says, uh, Jamie Torres Springer and the Deputy Chief of Staff, Kathy Lee, delivered a presentation on the costs and complexities of MTA infrastructure projects including the challenges of building elevators in often constrained spaces. For remarks directly related to elevator accessibility projects, see here. And if you click there, it's that. So first of all, that is a hyperlink. And if you click on that, that will refer to you to a link that is giving you information about other access uh, elevator accessibility projects. So about this project, so for those that are wondering what this is all about, the project being carried out by the MTA consists of building of two elevators, one connecting the street and mezzanine level, and another connecting the mezzanine to both platforms. The project also consists of one, expansion of the mezzanine by approximately 50 square feet, improving customer flow within the station, that's definitely good, new lighting for the expanded mezzanine, that's definitely good, lighting matters, especially at night, updates to the pedestrian bridge, new boating areas compliant with the ADA, with new platform edges and upgrades to existing street and station stairs to current ADA standards. The project for building an accessible entrance on the south side is budgeted for $74 million and is expected to be complete by mid-2024. The mid-station's accessibility upgrade will be complemented with security and communication enhancements with upgrades to the fire alarm system, installation of a new security camera system, a new public address system, and digital information screens. Offering better communication with clear announcements and greater access to information via screen, so that's definitely very good. The Queensboro Plaza Accessibility Project is one of many improvements coming to the 7 Line across Manhattan, Queens, as outlined in a press release issued last month. So regarding uh, schedule changes or service changes, for six weekends this winter and early spring, the seven line will be closed between Queensboro Plaza and Hudson Yards. Customers can transfer to and from the E, F, and 4 at 74th Street Broadway or to or from the N and W at Queensboro Plaza for service between Manhattan and Queens. Free shuttle buses will be provided between Queensboro Plaza and Vernon Boulevard Jackson Avenue and between Times Square and 34th Street Penn Station. I'm sorry, 34th Street Hudson Yards. The Grand Central Circle will operate all night and W service will run Saturdays from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. between Astoria de Mars Boulevard and 34th Street, Herald Square, in addition to end service. These service changes are scheduled to be in effect from 12.15 a.m. Saturday, February 4th until 5 a.m. Monday, February 6th, as well as from 3.45 a.m. Saturday to 10 p.m. Sunday uh, for the following weekends. So these will be your following weekends in which this will be going on. So we could practically assure you right now that almost all of February will experience these, not closures, but that specific portion of, of the 7 being closed down because of the ADA accessible upgrades. So you're looking at almost practically entire February. Then you have a half of March where this is going to be going on and one weekend in April where you're going to see this going on too. Additional weekend service changes are anticipated later in 2023 and for next year. Customers are advised to sign up for the weekend there, which is a weekly newsletter sent every Friday to inform customers of service changes throughout the system. The table post print and digital signs in stations, along with announcements in stations and on trains before the work begins. Customer service notifications will also be available on the MTA website. The app my MTA and also social media. In addition to building a fully accessible entrance on the south side at the Queensboro Plaza station in August 
2022, yada, 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 yada. So I think that really isn't needed, but I actually think this portion should be mentioned. The building of an accessible entrance on the Queensboro Plaza north side is the second transit improvement bonus approved by the CPC on their ZFA, which enables developers to improve access to public transit in the busiest areas of the city in exchange for an increase in their building's density. To learn more, you could visit this link right here to learn more about the zoning for accessibility, which will give you information regarding this accessible entrance that will be going on at Queensboro Plaza. So there you have it. What I'll do is I will dedicate a small portion to Earth Review where I will analyze what to expect for the next couple weekends for those that will be undergoing this service change on the Devil Line. Let's highlight it red so as you can see where we are referring to right now. So with this in mind, once again, because I'm, I'm referring to my phone and I see this. There it says, for six weekends uh, this winter and early spring, that line will be closed between Borough Plaza and Hudson Yards in Manhattan. So what we should do right now is the following. Definitely use the black in this map when we refer to the service change. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I am drawing a black line over the seven line because this will be the affected portion on this specific line. When we go down here, black means not in service. So I'll just do NIS. You know, sometimes acronyms do help at the end. So the black, as you see, where you have the seven line in this map, tells you that that portion will be suspended because of the ADA accessibility upgrades at the Queensboro Plaza station. So one thing to note about this project is that it will take place starting the first week for the weekend of February, as it mentioned in the press release, which I was just mentioning. So it will begin February the 4th, Saturday. It will begin at 1215 in the morning and it will end until February the 6th at 5 a.m. But it will continue on because they do mention the following days once again. So for the weekend of February 11th and 12th, for the weekend of February 25th and the 26th, so we're looking at, like I said, the entire month of February. Then we're looking at two weekends in March, March 11th and the 12th, and March 25th and 26th. And for April, it will be April 22nd and April 23rd. So in the black, once again, no service between Hudson Yards and Queensboro Plaza. And I can tell you right now, for those that go on the 7, I could almost tell you right now that this is definitely going to be a nightmare. Because if anything, for those that, for example, uh, take the station at either, I'm just giving an example of a Corona Plaza. And if you want to go to Manhattan, well, what are you going to do there? So the one thing that you want to do is the following because this is what they are encouraging customers to do so let me give you an uh, so let me give you a quick scenario you're taking a train at corona plaza and you're trying to go to manhattan first of all what you want to do is <laughs> take the train at corona plaza but then what you want to do is keep on going 90th street 82nd and then boom you hit the jackpot at 74th street broadways and what you want to do there is you want to get off. You want to get off at that station, 74th Street Broadway, because the options that they're giving you is that you take uh, the E, the F, the M, and the R. So they're giving you this station as an option. They're giving Jackson Heights and Roosevelt Avenue. So I could almost tell you right now that for those three weekends in February, for those two weekends in March, and for that one weekend in April, I definitely could assure you that Jackson Heights Roosevelt Avenue Station on 
well not on but in queens is gonna be really crucial and definitely be important and that also brings into mind how important it is that they not only not finish but continue the progress of the signal modernization work that is going on at the queen's boulevard line because i could assure you it is very important that they do that because one of the examples that it'll be put into test is once this goes on uh, now the one thing that they do mention here is that they're going to be providing buses they're going to be providing buses and what i'll do is i will let's see what color stands out i'll probably say at this point red red because that that color definitely stands out in this instance so we're going to highlight queensboro plaza which is right here we're gonna make a red line we're gonna make a red line and let's zoom out for a bit so that you can see what's going on okay so you're gonna have a bus that's gonna make stops between queensboro plaza and vernon boulevard jackson avenue oh, wait let me see and we're gonna find oh and between times square and 34 well i don't really know about that i don't really know what is the point of that even though yes that's very important could be very important so what i'll also do is in this map i will do red two and that will indicate shuttle bus route doing my best i can i know sometimes yes i'm sorry i could sometimes do a crazy a crazy job when i do these things but once again the first route the first shuttle bus route shuttle bus route the first shuttle bus route once again will be between queensborough plaza and vernon boulevard jackson avenue and then the second one that they're mentioning in this press release is from Times Square 42nd to Hudson Yards 34th so that is the second route the second shuttle bus route to SBR so let's see what else they are mentioning here so they do mention the shuttle service the Grand Central shuttle service but before we get to that I just want to close it up with this and that is uh that the second shuttle bus route will be between once again uh times square and hudson yards or hudson yards Times square now the other thing to note even though you can't really see it here because it's barely visible is that the grand central shuttle will operate all night so the g c s all night so the Grand Central Shuttle will operate all night. That's definitely good news. And the reason why they're doing that once again is because of the fact that there will be no setting service in Manhattan because of the service change. Now the one thing to know about the W is that there will be service on Saturdays from 7 in the morning to 7 p.m. So look at that. We're talking about a line that is never in service during the weekends, but somehow, some way. It will be in service during those weekends when it's effective. Now let's see. It does mention that. Okay, so when we talk about service, it will be running from Astoria, Ditmars Boulevard, and 34th Street Herald Square. That's what I'm seeing here. So the W will be running from Astoria, Ditmars. As you see there, the W for that portion will be running between Astoria Ditmarts and Herald Square, which is right over here. So what I'll do here is I don't want to draw a red. So what I will do is I'll do an orange so that it can compensate. So this is what the W will do. It will run all of Queens. We'll make those stops in Manhattan. It'll go through there. And then it will end at 
34th Street, Herald Square. So the orange will be the W in this map. So let me see what I'll do. Maybe right here I'll put that. The W. There will be weekend service because of that. Weekend service for W. I'm just gonna put SV for service. And once again, you're you're asking what will that time be? It will be from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now the thing is that's gonna be on. Saturdays and on Sundays if you're wondering how is the operation it will be from 10 in the morning so it's going to be later if I do find quiet instances and it will end at 6 p.m. it will end at 6 p.m. so I'm going to put 6 p and I'll just put SU for Sunday and the one thing to note is there will also be in addition to and service but the one thing that we should definitely make clear of is that not only will there be modifications to service but it's the fact that the w service will be there to help during this huge outage that's going on on the 7th so first of all i know this map looks really complicated with all the scribble scrabble that i did but first of all to wrap it up to make it easier what you see in the black in this map indicates you what will be the portion of the seven that will not be in service for those selected weekends uh, when this ADA accessible project begins. So like I said, no seven train service between Queensborough Plaza and Hudson Yards for those selected weekends during when this project gets done. What you see in the red are the two separate shuttle bus routes for the seven when this closure is in session or is in effect and once again that first shuttle route will be between borough plaza queensborough plaza and vernon boulevard jackson avenue so we're talking about that first shuttle bus route that will be serving mainland queens and then the second shuttle bus route will be serving manhattan and that second shuttle bus route in the red like you see there it's from hudson yards and times square 42nd so that is what's going on there. Now when we see, well, because the thing is, I should have actually drawn a different color for Grand Central Shuttle, but what they're doing when the server change is in effect on the 7 is what they're doing here is that they are providing extra service to the Grand Central Shuttle, letting it operate all night due to that incoming service change for the 7. And as you see in uh, the orange, and as we go up in the map once again, to look at my fair analysis, because it, to be fair, I should have made it green so that the color could stand out a little bit more. But where you see the two red circles drawn, specifically in the W map, is where you will have W service during that portion of when the 7 is affected because of the ADA project so once again on saturdays or during the weekend you're going to have w service from astoria de mars boulevard through 34 street herald square and once again if you're wondering what time will that service go on on the w on saturday specifically 7 a.m through 7 p.m and then on sunday it's from 10 a.m through 6 p.m and we have to be really careful about this because they're different times there are different times, and that's just something that we have to be a little bit careful of. So let me do this so that it can make much more sense instead of SU and SA. Just wanted to make it make more sense. Yes, this could be a headache because this will definitely take a lot for the seven. It's a very important line. It's an independent line. It operates by itself in certain instances. But I can tell you right now. When it's down, it's going to need a lot of help. And like I said, given that scenario that I mentioned here, where let's say you take the train at Corona Plaza on the 7, and you have to get to the city, and you don't want to take the Long Island Railroad at Flushing to go to the city, then your only chance is, like I said, with this example, you take the 7 at Corona Plaza, and then 
you take it for a couple of stops to get off at uh, 74th Street Broadway. And if you want to get to Manhattan as fast as possible, what you do at that point is you take the E and the F. You definitely don't want to be that guy that takes the R because, yes, we can understand that they have the new tape claiming that the signals are getting better and this and that. But again, still, all those stops, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will opt out and rather take the express route from Jackson Heights to Manhattan. That would be either taking the E or taking the F from Jackson Heights to go to Manhattan. So there you go. There you have it. I know this was a lot of scribble scrabble, but I'm pretty sure you guys get the point of this. Very important that I cover this because if anything, you will definitely have a lot of those that will be questioning, oh, can you do like a breakdown of how this is going to look in the map of the MCU? So with that, this is with the transit update. A like, share, and subscribe.